everyone, welcome to Prime Strings and this Learn to Play the Violin in 30 Days course. I'm Henriette and I'm so excited because today is day 16 and we've reached the halfway point to our course. I am in awe of you for having come this far. Congratulations, you have learned so much in such a short space of time. I'm hoping that by now you have subscribed to the channel because in the second half of this course there's a lot of good stuff still to come. Today we will be learning the D scale and Allegretto on page 35 in the book. And by the end of the lesson you will have a good grasp of this piece and I hope that it will allow you to have many more hours of happy practicing. So let's get started and let me play you the tuning notes. Here is your A. So let's play the D scale next, which you can find on page 34 in the book. However, if you know the A scale off by heart, you will be able to play the D scale straight away, as it is in essence the same as the A scale, except it starts on the D string and not on the A string. So as always, we will be playing each note twice with long bows. And before we start, I would like you to go over all the postures that we have learned, as we will continually be getting better at holding the violin, at holding the bow, at placing your fingers in the correct way and so on. So today I'm going to go back to my stance and you can find pictures of a good stance with your left foot one step forward at the start of the book. So step forward with your left foot a tiny bit and now make your spine really really long and you'll loosen your knees so when you have a good stance, it is an energetic and an active stance. And you'll see if you lean forward onto your front foot a little bit, that your arms come in front of your body more or less. Where if I stand in a less active and energetic stance, I can probably show you this way. Uh, I'm leaning back into my, into my back and my arms are here at the back. Now for violin playing, you know that you need your arms in front. So if you stand like this, you're going to have to lift your arms up and bring them forward. Whereas if you have a more energetic stance and you stand more on your front foot, your arms are automatically further forward. They're, they're in front of your body like that. That is a very useful exercise to realize how this stance is helping your playing. So next, let's check over our bow hold and in particular your thumb and your little finger. And I'm wondering, are you holding the bow very loosely? So I could just let it go out of my hand so you're not squeezing your fingers. Now, let's hold the violin and let's raise it high up on your left shoulder like we did in the previous lesson. So it is close by your ear and your head is more or less straight. So if you play like this, it's not quite right. Um, if you play like that, it's not quite right. Let's see if you can get your violin up a little bit higher. So, okay, now that we're having the correct stance, let's play the D major scale at long last. And we're playing every note twice with long bows. So my finger line's getting in gear, my thumb and my tennis ball. I'll count us in for four. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
So you may have seen me wriggle quite a lot forwards and backwards and I'm not saying you have to always move when you play the violin like that but you have to be flexible in your knees and be moving so that you know that none of your muscles in your back or in your legs are strain, straining to hold on uh, when you play. So a little bit of movement is actually a good thing. Let's now also play the D arpeggio which you can also find on page 34 and as usual we'll play the arpeggio notes only once uh, with long bows and we'll play the whole arpeggio over twice. So here we go, one, two, three, four. once again and this time I want you to work on stretching your bow arm forward so you make your bow as long as you can and you push your arm forward so that your bow stays parallel to the bridge we have seen in an earlier lesson and I just want to refresh your memory on that that if your arm goes sideways so it plays here your bow is going to be at an angle along the bridge whereas if you stretch your bow arm forward so my arm ends straight in front of my tummy the, the bow is parallel to the bridge. So let's practice that again on the D arpeggio. Here we go. And... Allegretto now. As you can see Allegretto is almost completely played on the D string and there are only a few notes on the A string. You may also notice that this piece almost entirely uses crotchets and quavers. Now the quavers, the short notes, in America they will call it the eighth notes, they are played with the half bows and the crotchets or the quarter notes are played with whole bows. It just depends on what you have the most of, what kind of notes you have the most of in your piece. Crotchets and quavers, like in this case, then the long bows, are, the longer notes are played with the longer bows and the shorter notes are played with shorter bows. So when we play Allegretto, I'm going to be starting at the heel of the bow and I'm going to play whole bow bow on that one. So you may have noticed I play the quavers, short bows, you might go up to half a bow at the point and then I connect the two sets of quavers up by a whole bow and I play the next quavers at the lower half of the bow. So this piece you can constantly alternating upper half and lower half of the bow and that is the challenge and at the same time the beauty of this piece. If you look underneath the crotchets you can see that little mark and that means you can play it with an accent. So because you're using much more bow that note will automatically be accented. Now, shall we play the whole piece through then? One and two.
And at this point, we use the whole bow and the bow goes much more slowly because we've, we're playing a minim, which count, is two counts long. Then you've got a rest and during that rest, you retake the bow. So your arm makes a big circle and we're going to reset the bow on the D. And now we're going to continue it. One and... and you may hold it as long as you like and then once you get to the next set of quavers you pick up the pace again slowly on that last note at the same time when you play that last note aim to play your bow arm forward again like we did earlier on in the, in the arpeggio so that you end with a straight bow on the last note well done that's a really good start to this piece now let's look at it into a little bit more detail and I want you to look at bar 9 and in bar 9, you've got the first finger on the D string, followed by the first finger on the G string. And we're going to, to try not to hop our finger across from one string to another, but I would like you to try and place your finger in between the two strings. So you have, with one finger, you have both notes. So you might try this, look. that you miss one note or you have got one that is slightly out of tune just reset your finger in that case and let's try again shall we and this is generally much more accurate if you place one finger on two strings so I've literally placed my finger in between the two strings as you can see um, and that is a good technique that you can add to your repertoire now. So with this stage, I would like you to go over any confusing sections that you came across when we played it the first time and see if we can get it a little bit faster. Now when we play this piece a little bit faster, I'm still going to be working on heel, whole bow, point, whole bow. So that is really what we're working on in this particular piece. So when you're ready, let's sort out your left hand. Make sure you hover your fingers above the string wherever you can. One, two, three.
That is a lovely smooth sounding piece. I love that one. So now let's think about the performance directions that are indicated in this music. We've talked about We've talked about the accents before, and you create the accents by using long and slightly faster bows. There are another few things to look at. First of all, underneath the first note, it has the letters MF, and we have learned before that they mean mezzo forte. So neither too loud nor too quiet, a sort of in the middle um, loudness that will do you fine. Now, if you have a look at the end of line one, there is this comma, now, in an earlier lesson, we've talked about four bar phrases, and that is um, a new, this is where a new phrase begins. Now, because we start on two quavers before the bar line, right at the beginning, uh, our new phrase also starts two quavers before the bar line, and this is called an upbeat. And an upbeat is when you don't start on the first beat of the bar, but we're starting on another beat of the bar. It can be longer upbeats or shorter upbeats. And here we've got two quavers upbeat. So perhaps you've noticed that as I counted this in the previous time, I counted one, two, three, ta -da! and that was our upbeat to the beginning. So I didn't start on the first beat of the bar, I started on the fourth beat of the bar this time. So our second phrase, as I was saying, also starts on the fourth beat um, and then you can see if you look at bar eight you finish on a long minim so a long note and the phrase is finished right there you've got a rest and then the next phrase again starts on the fourth beat of the bar four and one it goes um, then from bar nine onwards there's very little in the way of performance directions until we get to the almost the last bar of the third line where it says rit and rit is short for ritenuto which means slow it down and then you also see what's called a diminuendo and diminuendo is that little hairpin thing that indicates that you're going to get a little bit quieter so not only do you get quieter you get slower at the same time until you get to the pause and i want you in your own performance to make that a very gradual getting softer and getting slower so that it is a natural progression into the pause. So for instance, if I play from the way you see the word ritenuto, so you can hear that I'm gradually getting softer and I'm gradually getting slower. And that just goes into the pause. Now after the pause, you can see a comma. There's lots of information just there at that point in your music. So the comma means just wait a moment before you get on and carry on with the rest of the piece. And then it says down bow. So we're starting as we've done before at the heel, but we're going down bow on the first note. After that it says up bow, that little V shape means up. So you go down up like that with your bow. And then we play it mezzo forte. Sorry, that's a whole lot of words indicating all the things that are happening just at the end of line three. Pick up whatever you can pick up and leave the rest. It's not that important at this stage. As you progress, you'll pick up more and more. So I'm going to have a look at the last line now where it says our tempo um, next to bar 13. And our tempo means you pick up the original pace again. Remember, we've had the pause where we slowed down and the ritenuto. And from bar 13, we pick up the pace. And I would suggest you pick up the pace after the comma, so on the upbeat to bar 13. So let me play you the ritenuto again and then listen to how you can pick up the pace. Wait a moment. So, for those of you who can manage to play that fast, that's absolutely awesome. I'm going to play it for you 
all the way through at a little faster pace. So I'll count this in for three and we're playing on four and. One and two and three. enjoyed this lesson if you have don't forget to subscribe to the channel and i look forward to seeing you in the next lesson goodbye <laughs>